Hey guys, James here from Replica Reviews again, and today we're going to be doing something uh, that I've wanted to do since I first tried this rifle, and that is going to be reviewing the Virac HW110. Uh, now this rifle has very, very kindly been lent to me um, by one of the local club shooters here, a guy called Bob. Um, and yeah, he's basically given me the gun for a couple of weeks, I've been out testing it, um, and trying to get to know the gun and, and kind of form an opinion for myself. Um, and that is the Virac HW110. There's a bit of a, a new gun really, it hasn't been on the market overly long um, and it, it's very different to, to anything else on the market. Now the first thing that kind of really kind of twigged everybody's um, kind of interest was the fact that obviously it uses a, a, a ballistics polymer block. So the receiver rather than being um, metal is a ballistics polymer. Uh, and the second thing really um, that I think caught a lot of people's eye was this was the first PCP um, that Virac had released since the 100. So obviously a lot of people, this one comes in a little bit cheaper, a lot of people are like, is it a replacement, is it an upgrade? Um, and to, to be honest, from what I found, it's a completely different gun. To consider the 100 and the 110 as, as the same thing, I, I don't think that would be reviewing it correctly. So we are going to be reviewing it as a standalone rifle. Now a couple of interesting features with this one, obviously it's a, a pre-charged rifle. Uh, this is the standard version, so obviously the 110 at the moment only comes in the standard. And it comes with this really, really nice and um, kind of covered... Um, sporting stock. It's almost like a, a kind of um, similar to what Daystate did with the Tactical series. It's, they've coated it with this sort of soft touch grip um, coating. Good for weatherproofing but underneath it still is a wooden stock. As I said a second ago you've got the plastic block um, that really nicely houses the 10-shot uh, the rotary magazine as well. We'll move in and show you that in a second. Um, as I say full-size cylinder on the front and the Virat moderator as well. Now out of the box, this gun hasn't really been changed um, and it is, it's one of the quietest guns I think I've come across, um, at least out of the box anyway. It kind of puts my, my 100 to shame um, and yeah, it, it's, it's ridiculously quiet for something that's as short as it is. So what we'll do is we'll quickly move in, we'll show you a couple of features of the rifle, then we'll do a bit of accuracy testing, see what the rifle's about, maybe take it out on the HFT range and we'll see. But anyway, let's crack on, let's uh, look at the features that set this rifle out from the rest. Okay, so much like any kind of Virac PCP rifle, i.e. the 100, um, it's a really, really simple way to, to fill the cylinder. As you can see on the front, you do have the gauge, shows you, uh, you know, how much you're doing on your air. Now what I have found, from 200 down to 90, which is where it just falls off reg, um, we've been getting about 120 shots, um, which for a rifle this size, I think is really damn good fine. Um, and a, Pretty good result to be fair, and um, there's not many rifles out there of this size that will pull off 120 shots. But as I say, filling it really simple, you just pull this little tab out like so. Anybody that's owned a Virac before will know obviously how that works. And then using the standard HW probe, push it in like so, fill up your rifle, and obviously you can just work off the gauge that's on the front here. Take it out, and then obviously just put your dust cover in. So it really is that simple. Um, and as I say, it's a, a full-size cylinder, um, or a, a standard-size cylinder, so you, you are getting a good amount of shots for something that is essentially quite a carbine rifle. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the left-hand side of the rifle. Now, obviously, this is the side that's usually up against your cheek for you right-handed shooters, um, so there's, there's not really too much in the form of controls. Now, one thing that I do really like is when the rifle is loaded, you do have a safety catch on this side that can be engaged. Um, that is the only bit of this rifle that's ambidextrous. Um, you can get the left-handed option, and obviously this is where the um, the mag release uh, lever that I'll show you in a second would sit. Um, but this is the only thing that you can control from both sides, which is quite a nice feature. Now, as you'll probably see here, and as I mentioned at the start, the, the stock, it is just a standard wooden sporting stock, but they've put this weatherproof coating over the top, and it's quite, uh, it's quite nice to hold. It doesn't slip around in your gloves. I mean... The MacWet gloves I use are pretty good anyway, but when it gets a little bit damp, it doesn't seem to roll around as much. Now one thing that a lot of people have picked up on, and obviously was a big selling point of this rifle, was the fact that the block is made of plastic. Now I say plastic, it's more of a, you know, more people would like to call it a polymer. Um, it's a similar kind of principle to how Glock do their pistols. Obviously that was a big thing when Glock came out with a plastic pistol. I was oh, it's never going to work. But the, the way I kind of justify in my head, when you look how good the HW100 was, when you look at how good any Virac rifle is, um, you know, be it PCP, Springer, whatever, if they have chosen to use this, there must be a good reason for it. 
Um, and you know, it does save on weight, which is quite a nice feature. It does have a 20mm rail on the top, and even the barrel bands here are uh, a polymer as well. But, as I say, it feels robust. Um, the, I can't see any kind of signs of, of wobble. Um, when you rattle it around, there are no rattles. So it's a very, very quiet gun to carry around the field. Um, and as, as I say, th there's got to be a reason they've used it. Um, and I do think this will be the first of many. So anyway, let's turn the rifle around, move in, and I'll show you the actual controls and obviously how to load the magazine, where the magazine goes, um, and all the, all the important stuff. So as usual, the rifle, this is going to be the bit that you probably spend most of your time with. Now obviously this is uh, what I would call the business end, um, and they have changed the block. Anybody that's used the HW100 before uh, will see instantly where things have changed, um, but we will do a separate video kind of going through the differences there later on. Um, but as I say, cocking lever has been changed, it's not assisted going to the rear, so you can just move it back, and it is dead silent, you can see the action being moved, and then when it gets to the back, there's a click. That click is when the rifle is now cocked, um, as such, you know, that's as far back as it needs to come. And as you push it forward, you can see the probe starting to come forward, but it does meet a wall. At this point, there is a bit of resistance, and then it locks forward. Now, it's a little bit stiffer to lock forward than it is to bring to the rear, but, you know, that can only be a good thing. And one thing I really do like, um, you know, much the same with a lot of PCPs, is when you bring it to the rear, if you pull the trigger in, you can actually decock the rifle, so you don't actually have to fire off the round or the action or whatever. But anyway, to load the magazines, bring the uh, the bolt to the rear. You get your 10 shot magazine that you can see here, and you slide it just in a little bit. Now as you see, there's that little gubbing there. Now on the HW100, you used to have a little black bar, and you push that to the back, put your mag in, and so on. With the 110, you have to push this lever up, put your magazine in, click it round and just let go. And now that is indexed in, ready to go. Um, obviously I'm not going to bring the bolt forward because there was rounds in, and it's exactly the same reverse. Bring the magazine out, but you have to keep the, um, the lever here up. It's a bit of a fiddly thing to do actually, I'm not entirely sold. But one thing I can now demonstrate is obviously the rifle is cocked, the safety catch will engage. And it's a very, very positive engagement. When it clicks into to safe, you know. And likewise, when it's back into fire, you know as well. So let's decock the rifle again and let's move forward and carry on with the rest of the review. Now one thing I really did want to show um, in a little bit more detail is this new block um, that Virarch have come up with. Now using my pointer to point out everything that you can see here is plastic. Obviously these silver bits, you know, they are metal, um, but all of this, plastic, along here, plastic, everything. Now usually on a HW100 or any other gun this would all be metal um, and as I say Glock used the ballistics plastic, um, or ballistics polymer, should we say, um, and Virac has started doing the same. And obviously, all of these cutouts and things, it does save a lot of weight. Now, as far as strength goes, I can't fault it. I wouldn't worry about knocking it at all. Um, and, you know, to be honest, Virac, as I said before, and I'll probably say a million times in this video, they don't do things, unless there is a damn good reason for doing it. Now, one thing that I did really like, um, that I will show you whilst we've got the, the action down here, is the fact that the top of the pick rail at the top here, if I just use this, you'll be able to see. Now, on the 100, these two sections, um, they, they're, they're detached. Here, you've got this bridge across the top. Now, it has been argued, and it's not something I found, that... You do get a bit of a POI um, zero change because these two sections aren't linked on the 100. So to bring this top bit might sort of stop complaints there. Okay guys, so let's do the fun bit. Now I'm going to get the 10 round mag, going to load it up, let's put some rounds down range. Now I'm not going to faff around with the zero, obviously not being my rifle, I don't want to kind of start tweaking things and up upsetting the owner. I know if I lent my rifle to somebody the last thing I'd want is them fiddling with my zero. So we're going to take the 10 round magazine. Um, which is worth noting, Virat very kindly give you two. Um, so, you know, you've got 20 rounds straight off the bat there, which is quite helpful. And we're going to load them up to the rifle. So, as I say, bolt to the rear. You've got to flick this little lever up. And we'll drop the magazine in. Click him round, lever back down, and then bolt forward. As I said earlier, we can now put the safe catch on. Now, this was the only thing with the rifle I wasn't overly too fond of. Um, with the 100, you can clip that little lug back, you remember that little black switch, you click it to the rear, done. This one here, whether you're unloading or loading, you have to have it positively engaged up. And it's one of those things, with practice it might come easier, but for me it's just a little bit fiddlier. 
but it works really well, indexes beautifully, and as you can see, first time, magazine's lined up, and it's ready to go. So anyway, got my tactical bench bag, let's put some rounds down that way somewhere, and it's, just pay attention to how quiet, I'm sure the camera's not going to do it justice, but just quite how quiet this rifle is. That's that done. So this point bolts the rear again, and this is the bit that can be a little bit fiddly. So you lift up the lever, and I tend to find pushing it from the opposite side, the magazine just comes out, and then you can take it out. And you get magazine number two, place them in, and there we go, we're good to go again. Okay guys, it's just worth really noting at this point that this cocking lever um, is so smooth. Um, it really has been refined. Whatever Viarc have done inside this action is nothing short of genius. Um, as I say, bringing it to the rear really easy and it just clicks in place. And then bring it forward. There is a bit of a resistance, but when it goes forward, there's no is it far enough, is it not? It clips back in. Um, and yeah, I, I really like it. As I said earlier, with a bit of practice, loading has become a little bit easier. Unloading is still a bit of a nuisance, you know, you do have to pop the mag out. But, loading, literally, lever up, place it in, good to go. It really is that simple. Tell you what though, these 10 rounds go so quickly. Anyway, let's grab some targets and show you exactly what this rifle um, has achieved. You know, we've got a couple of different pallets here. First one that I want to show you. So this was 10 shots with the field targets, the H&M pallets. You might be able to see hopefully the hole just in the centre there. Really, really good grouping actually. I was pleasantly surprised. Second one here was the Bisley Long Range Magnums. Now these are a little bit different, hopefully you can see the hole in the centre. They did spread out a little bit, it's still a very tight grouping. And most of those, you know, if you'd zeroed over a bit so they're in the centre, would have been kill shots without a shadow of a doubt um, against something like a rabbit or, or so. And the last one, which is the, the kind of the best one really, saving the best till last, um, was the field target trophies. Now these are the ones that Bob tends to use on his rifle, uh, they're the ones in the slip. So, as you can see, again, really, really tight grouping. So, there is no problem with accuracy with this wolf of loafer barrel at all. Um, I'm quite confident we could take this out hunting without any issues. And once it's zeroed um, to, to my eyes and whatnot, it would be perfect. The weight, the size, everything about it, because it's quite carbine, would make it brilliant. And obviously, the accuracy just backs it up a treat. So, let's crack on uh, with a conclusion, just final thoughts. And, uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay guys, so that's me all pretty much done. As you can see, this really is quite a capable rifle and it's so nice to see one another rifle from Virarc 
Um, cause you know, they don't do much very often. They're not one of these companies that comes out with a Mark II or Mark III or a limited edition this, a special edition that. They only seem to do things, one, when they've done it properly and two, just as and when. Um, and to be, to be honest, they've really kind of pushed the bar with this one. For the price point that this rifle is at, it's very difficult to beat. Now, yes, okay, it comes in £100 cheaper than the uh, the HW100. You know, I would personally, having, you know, the ability, I would buy the 100 over this. But for that £100, that's a good scope and a good set of mounts. So you can have a full setup ready to go out hunting with no problems at all for the price of a HW100. Now, because they've spent so much time working on this action, refining everything, as I said earlier, you've got a full-size cylinder on something that's only the same length as the carbine 100. Um, it, you know, it knocks inches off the, the standard anyway. Um, and yeah, it's phenomenal. What they've done here is, is absolutely brilliant. Now, there's a couple of things that are gonna be a bit Marmite. The polymer block, people are either gonna love it, hate it. Personally, it works, it works for Glock. And Virarc would not have done it if they didn't think that it was a good idea. You know, they don't mess around. If they're gonna do it, they do it once and they do it right. The other thing is the 20mm Picatinny rail on the top. Now, that is going to split the pin in, I'm sure. Personally, I quite like it. If you've got a day scope and then you want to swap across to a night scope where you've got a photon or something, just bolt on, bolt off. Job done. Um, so for me, I think more companies are going to start using this in the long term. But for the moment, there's not too many. Um, obviously, the 110, a couple of the FX rifles that are coming out. Um, but apart from that, not too many. But I think it's going to be here to last. Again, a massive thank you to Bob for letting me borrow this rifle. Um, I've had it now for a couple of weeks and, and got to know it quite well. Um, and I have to say, it, it really, really impresses me. Now, as I say before, in you know, with the 100 review, make sure on your rifle it has hole cartridge stamped on it. There are grey imports, there are people bringing them in not through hole, which is lovely until something goes wrong. Yes, they might be cheaper, but you don't get that warranty support. So just make sure it comes from hole. As I say, this one here came from the gun room down in Ivybridge, Devon. Um, it's where mine came from as well, actually. Um, you know, one of the best kind of shops down here that we've got at the moment. So a big thanks to those guys for, for hooking Bob up with this one as quick as they did. And also, like with everybody else, I can't do the review without mentioning there were problems when it came out. They sent it back to Hull. Hull tinkered with it, changed the barrel and whatnot. And it's come back and it's shot like an absolute dream since. Um, Bob seems to like it. I asked him for negatives as something to, to put in the review. Couldn't really come up with any, um, apart from it's very good. So, yeah, an incredibly competent rifle. If you've got any questions, put them in the box below. If you like what you've seen, obviously it's a bit of a rough and ready review. We're not the, uh, the most high-tech ones around. Obviously, click the subscribe button down the bottom. And obviously, if you want to see a couple more pictures, bits and pieces, feel free to go over to our Facebook page as well. Um, simply type in replica reviews, we'll pop straight up and you find this rifle and many more over there, along with some 50 cal shooting as well if you haven't seen that. So anyway guys, thanks for watching another one of our videos and uh, we'll see you next time.